Okay, today we're going to be disassembling, or we have already disassembled, one end of an MGB GT back axle. This is a wire wheel back axle. And I'm taking it apart so that I can replace the oil seals and uh, the bearings if necessary and anything else that I need to replace. Uh, and then I'm going to paint it. I've already half painted the axle as you can see here. Um, the, uh, I've been using uh, POR15 um, black paint. I need to do the rest of it because it was sandblasted and it's going slightly rusty already. So, Anyway, so the way this comes apart, really the first thing to do is to take, this is the, uh, the back plate, uh, and this is what all the brake equipment, the brake drum, uh, sorry, the uh, brake shoes attached to, and the brake cylinder, and so forth. So you need to take all that stuff off, which we've done already. Um, but this normally is sandwiched between this uh, part, of this end of the axle, the housing for the bearing, uh, and the hub. So in order to get this plate off there, you need to take the hub off. And that, in many internet videos, looks like it's a very easy process, but it isn't, or it wasn't for me at least. The first thing you've got to do is get this split pin. This hub is held on to the end of this using a castle nut that's got a split pin through it. And that split pin goes through these holes here, through to, to stop the thing unwinding. Um, in between the hub, in between the nut and the hub is also this collar, which is an angled, angle-shaped piece of metal with a gap in it so it can compress down. And that all goes these three items are down this hole here and the split pin is inserted through these holes at the side um, so you've got to be quite dexterous to get the split pin out the, the nut that holds all of this assembly on the end of the axle shaft that's on at about 150 um, pounds so that's quite tight on there so you'll need a You'll need a um, impact driver or something like that. Uh, also, the thing about that is, I think this is, I can't remember what size this is. It's a special size. I had to go and buy one of these off eBay. Um, it should really be an impact one, but we're only using it once, so maybe that's okay. But the walls of this were too thick, so we had to have them turned down in a lathe so that it would fit down this hole to get onto the top of that nut there. So that was quite tricky for a start. But that's done now. So, if you undo the nut, technically the hub should just slide off these splines here, which it doesn't. Which it doesn't. Um, so it must have been quite well pressed on there. Uh, what I had to use was a crowbar between these, the back of these bolts here, and this which is the front, this is the cover that goes over this bearing here um, and just gently pressing against that surface and then the opposite side eventually cause this just to pop off. So this all needs cleaning up now. These bolts here are where the uh, the brake drum attaches. Uh, they're not how you bolt the wheels on, the wheels are held on by one of these spinners goes on the top like this. Actually it goes the other way. So anyway, that's that side. So next step is to take the back plate off. So this is now off. The back plate comes off by undoing these four bolts which go through the back plate, through these holes here, through the bearing mm -hmm. cover which normally is on top of here, and through the end of the axle housing. All of this needs a good clean up. So you take these bolts off, the back plate now comes off, so I can take that away to, do, to paint it. Uh, and then this just needs to be pried off or knocked off with the edge of a soft face hammer or something. So uh, this part proved to be quite hard work. I managed to get one of these off with the aid of the air wrench. So uh, this is a 5 16th spanner, put it on the back that 
actually makes it like work. I don't know why I didn't buy one of these before. For a long time, and they're pretty rusty. And when they come off, that nut is quite hot because of the friction that uh, has been involved there. So, here we are, that's interesting. So in this case, the, this is the oil seal. Uh, keeps the oil in the tube uh, and it's come off with the uh, bearing cover attached to the back of the back plate probably because I've painted the back of the back plate and I need to uh, chisel that off a bit uh, and we can see here now uh, here's a bit of oil coming up there this is the uh, bearing race in there if you might be able to see that and that seems to be rotating quite nicely so I don't I don't feel any grittiness to that. Um, okay, excellent. Let's see if I can get this to come off. This might be better. There we go. Just paint and grime that's holding that on. So there is our bearing seal. Seems like it's in fairly good condition, but rubber rubber's perished on this side a bit. But I'll clean that up. There's a little boot that covers the uh, where the handbrake part goes in. That is old and horrible, so we'll probably replace that. And I just need to take these. This is the brake adjuster that you I was telling you about. It's squared. It's supposed to be square, but that is just in a mess. And that is the brake cylinder. And there is the uh, the entry point for the fluid to go in. So uh, that, sorry, there is the entry point for the fluid to go in. This is the bleeding, bleeding nipple. Um, I'm just going to replace that. I think the new ones are about eight pounds each or something, so not very expensive. So this needs to go off to the parts wash now, along with this. <coughs> and we're going to use this again to put the uh, bearing and the half shaft out. So I've repositioned the camera slightly so that hopefully you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. Here's the bearing which seems to be moving nice and smoothly with any bind without any binding. Here is the collar that I may want to remove. These are the splines that the hub sits on and this is the um, and that the castle nut and the uh, and this collar sit on. So what I want to do is I want to pull this half shaft out of the axle so that I can inspect the bearings, replace this collar if I need to, and at the other end of the half shaft, I don't know if you can see this, this is my engineering mug, uh, is a, um, a gear inside the differential and there's the half shaft there and I want to take that gear out so that the disc behind it, the thrust washer that's made of fibre, can be replaced to stop the uh, what's called clunking, which is when the uh, when the car takes up drive, there's a sort of clunk from the rear rear final drive. So I want to get rid of that. I want to get that replaced before I bolt this axle onto the Cobra. Um, so those are the reasons I want to do this. This bit of scoring here appears to be very surface. I can maybe just feel it with my fingernail. So I think I'm not going to replace that, but I might do. I have to buy some new bolts from somewhere anyway. So uh, <coughs> these are the bolts that hold the bearing cover onto the uh, end of the axle tube. They also hold the back plate on. They went in like this. I'm going to buy new ones of these because they're pretty grotty and they've been damaged in places at the end, which makes them hard to wind the, the nuts onto. But for the time being, I'm going to use these as spacers like this. I'll put one in this hole here. Uh, one equal length. One in this hole here. Uh, and then I'm going to slide on. I need to pull this out, so I'm going to I need to take the castle nut and the collar off first. And put the hub back on temporarily. And these spacers are making a nice gap, and that's probably about maybe an inch and a half, two inches, something like that. We're going to put the collar on down on the end of the 
on the end of the axle shaft. Then we're going to take the castle nut and put that on there as well. <coughs> so if we can get this to bite. There we go. That's all nice and tight. Okay. So now I'm going to use the compressor and the air wrench to wind that nut down the axle shaft, which will have the effect because it, this hub can't go that way, the axle shaft must need to go this way. Um, so the axle shaft will be pulled out of the uh, axle tube and the bearing, which you can just about see here, is going to inch out. There may be some noise while I'm doing this because the compressor might need to start up. Like I say, you may not have one of these of this size. Um, we had to have this turned down in a lathe to make it fit down the hole here. Uh, so set that to undo. So, unfortunately, you missed a bit. What happened was the uh, I wound it down. What I should have done was uh, take it apart and adjust the length of these spaces slightly by winding it back up to push it out. Because what's happened is the hub is uh, now got mated with the collar here. Um, so the winding the nut in, the castle nut on the end, wasn't making any more difference. So I needed to wind these out a bit. When I came to do it, turns out these were so jammed up against the back face of the hub that I couldn't turn it um, to take these out. So that's where your uh, soft face hammer comes in and I just whacked it on the back edge and eventually the, the bearing and the hub and the half shaft have all come apart in one piece. So now I need to work out how to get that apart. It's probably going to be a few more hammer blows to do it. And then we'll be able to withdraw the whole axle shaft like so. And there's the other end without the uh, without the um, gear on it that we uh, need to replace because the gear at the other end is um, still in the differential. So, so now all this needs is a nice clean up. I might consider pulling the bearing off there, but it's that's running pretty smoothly really. Um, and then we can put it all back together.